All right, the group you see behind me here is the Wind Symphony. We've had a lot of fun this year so far. Um, I do want to introduce the first piece. Uh, you'll notice it is in three movements, so uh, hence the suite. And uh, this is uh, just one of kind of the staples of wind band literature. It's been one that's been on my bucket list for a while, so we've had fun working on it, and I've enjoyed kind of crossing it off the list um, of just wonderful pieces to play. So we hope you enjoy it. Like I say, it is in three movements, so uh, traditionally you would wait until the end of the third movement to applaud, if you can continue yourself. <laughs> English folk songs.
certainly, uh, certainly hope you enjoyed listening to that as much as we enjoyed preparing it. That was a lot of fun to put together and uh, great to feature some of our wonderful soloists too. So um, our next piece, this is our ballad. One of the difficult things about uh, programming a ballad is oftentimes there's not a lot of great percussion parts because it's a ballad, right? And uh, this is one of those exceptions. One of the reasons that I love this piece so much is there's a lot for the percussion to do and really adds to the kind of mystery and drama and emotion of the piece. Uh, 1,000 Cranes uh, it was written uh, in memory of a person uh, who the composer uh, kind of spoke of as a mentor. And one of the things that uh, as we kind of delve into this a little bit, 1,000 Cranes in the Japanese culture as a way to kind of, it's a sign of health and prosperity and you give those little cranes, if you've ever made those back in elementary school, you give those to folks as a sign of health and prosperity. And so that's kind of the heart behind this piece um, and it's just a chance for um, these young folks behind me to really express um, some, just some wonderful musical ideas. So we hope you enjoy 1,000 Cranes.
that's hard to believe, but high school is going to be sometimes filled with emotion. And we have channeled that into a positive experience this evening for you parents. We hope you enjoyed that emotional performance. And then, now that they've got it out of their system, you will never have to deal with that at home anymore. <laughs> confident. Um, before we close out our portion of the program, uh, just a couple of quick thank yous. Um, just such a, you know, so again, coming off a of marching season, so many people who help make possible what we do here today, people behind the scenes, um, parents. Uh, I, I know I said this at the marching band banquet, but uh, I just want to reiterate how grateful we are for you. Um, and not just our marching band parents, those of you who are fall athlete parents and you have supported these musicians for many years, whether it's through private lessons or paying for the instrument, um, we wouldn't be up here doing what we're doing if not for you. So uh, students, can you help thank our parents, please? Um, also, we have, uh, kind of new this year, we have a wonderful tech crew who's kind of been coming in and taking over some of the responsibility of um, running these events, and for about as long as I can remember, we've kind of done that on our own, okay? Whoever had the event in here, we were doing the lights and the sound and all of that stuff, and it's been amazing. We have a, a, a student tech person, Maya, who's been helping out with that a lot, and uh, so just a big thank you to all the folks back there in the booth. Also, I do want to thank uh, Mr. Pepperly. Uh, Kevin has been, he recorded all of our marching band performances, and he's here recording tonight our concert band performance. Again, it's one less thing that I have to worry about getting a video camera going and all of those things. Um, and then he posts that up to Facebook, or excuse me, not Facebook, but uh, to YouTube. So there's a Hilliard Davidson YouTube channel, so I encourage you to check that out. You'll be able to kind of watch uh, all the performances as we go throughout the year. So thank you, uh, Mr. Pepperly. We appreciate that. And then, of course, um, our outstanding administration here in Hilliard. Uh, we are just so fortunate to be surrounded by administrators who value what we do. And it's not just lip service. They are here. They are active. Um, they put their money where their mouth is. That They invest in this program. And uh, we would not be where we are without them. And so um, I know Mrs. Brickley is here tonight. Um, I'd like to thank her, Dr. Scholl, who's our fine arts administrator. Also, our outstanding new superintendent, our entire administrative team. Help me thank them, please. Finally, we are going to finish with a piece entitled Sword of the Titans, and as you listen to this piece, you might think, what movie is this from? It's not, okay? You're going to wonder. Uh, it, it, the, the composer does write for a lot of movies, so it's certainly in that vein, and he even talks about it in his program notes a little bit. Even when he's writing a piece that's not for the movie, he tries to create a story and tell a story through the music. So I invite you, as you're listening to this, to kind of think, you know, what story might you might be coming to your mind as you listen to this piece. So we're going to finish off with Sword of the Titans. I thank you again for coming, uh, for your continued support of these wonderful students, and uh, we hope you have a safe drive home.
Thank you.